Hello folks, Jason Christman, JC's Bees. Today is the day many of you have been waiting for. Um, if you remember back months ago, as we were going into winter, it may have been even fall, um, I mentioned over winter I was going to be uh, building a homemade ProVap, and uh, after I got it made, I was going to release a video on how I made it. I know it seems like I've been dragging my feet, but the time is finally here. Today you are about to see how I made my ProVap. A lot of this stuff was trial and error, um, like the main support bracket. How long did it have to be? Um, where did the bins need to be? Where did my holes need to be in the support bracket? So a lot of this stuff was, you know, I would take like the support bracket and I would take the uh, AVS uh, plastic box and I would mount them together, kind of mark a couple places out, take them back apart, drill a couple holes, put it back together, make sure everything lines up where I want it, take it back apart. So it was very tedious and very time consuming and it was like that throughout the whole process. Um, there was a couple fellas um, that helped me out along the way, um, a couple followers, and I would like to give them a shout out. And I'm gonna go ahead and scroll them across the bottom of the screen here, and uh, a big thank you goes out to you. Um, if it wasn't for you, um, I'd probably still be working on this project. And uh, a huge shout out to Todd. Um, Todd did more than just give me advice. Me and Todd worked out a little trade, and, uh, and he took it up on himself to make my cook pot. So in return, he'll be getting a couple mated cleans from me this summer. So I love the swap, I love the barter system, and I like that we worked that out, Todd. Appreciate that. Um, and that's one of the things that you're gonna have to consider, um, where you're gonna get your cook pot. A lot of the supplies that I use to build this ProVap are gonna be listed down in the video description. Um, there's gonna be links to a lot of it, and you can go there and get exactly the same thing I did. The one thing you're not gonna be able to get is the cook pot. Um, at this present time, there is no way around going to ProVap and just buying their cook pot. But um, if you know somebody that's a machinist, then that would be the route to take maybe. Um, you could probably get a machinist to make you one relatively cheap, as where I believe the ProVap cook pot is 50 bucks right off the bat. Something to consider maybe if you don't know a machinist, but if you do, I think I would uh, be talking to them and seeing what kind of deal they could work out for you. Okay, folks, I got a quick update. I'm working with uh, another individual that's willing to produce and sell the cook pot. Um, they have yet to provide me with a link, but once they do, I will be putting it down in the video description. They're also willing to produce their own version of the ProVap and sell them. Um, I will also be linking that down in the video description. But keep in mind, these links have not yet been given to me. So give it a few days and check back. Um, after you get your cook pot, the rest of it you're able to purchase pretty regularly, pretty easily. So that's a big uh, convenience. Now, I will say, there's gonna be a lot of tips and tricks um, that I learned. I'm gonna mention some of them. I'm not gonna leave them out. Um, but there's gonna be some more that I'm gonna leave over on my Patreon um, page. So if you follow me on Patreon, um, you're gonna learn a little bit more in detail um, some of the tricks that I use to build my ProVap. Uh, I just wanna throw that out there. Um, I remember last time I mentioned uh, Patreon, um, the dark side of YouTube seemed to open up and wanted to eat me. Well, I'm not trying to upset anybody. I'm just trying to be sustainable at what I do. So if that's something you're interested in, head on over to Patreon and check that out. Uh, there'll be a link for that down in the video description also. Um, I wanna go ahead and throw out here that a lot of the supplies um, I had to buy. So like for instance, there's wire terminals. Sure, if you have wire terminals, you won't have to buy that. Um, there's several different, or there's a few different uh, wire terminals used or wire lugs. And uh, for that reason, I had to buy a kit. So right there was 20 bucks. Um, you can wrap a lot of money up in this if you don't have any of the parts. Um, the copper tubing, I had to buy 20 foot. I think that was 12 bucks or something like that. So either way, it all adds up really quick. 
Um, if you have to buy everything, um, you're going to be right up around, I think I have $165 in all the parts, and I didn't buy the cook pot. So, yeah, that's expensive, but when you consider that uh, to go to ProVap and buy theirs, you're looking at 500 bucks. So, I still saved money, and um, at the same time, I had a lot of fun building this. It was a fun project, um, something to tinker on uh, on these cold days, and uh, I like that. That's good for the mind, keep you busy. Um, so I want to throw that out there. If you do have some of these supplies, you're going to greatly save. So let's go on over the video and uh, check it out, see what you think. Okay, so to begin with, we're going to take our plastic box and we are going to make our hole for our PID to fit into. And what I did is I used, this is the, uh, the fastener that slides on the back and holds it in place. I used this as a template and put it over the front where I wanted my hole to be, traced it out, and then used a Dremel to cut it out. Um, you'll also notice um, this bigger hole here, and my original plan was to use this toggle switch which would light up and show power going to the PID. I like the, the idea of having a way to shut it off. Um, after getting this switch and making this hole, I realized this is for 12 volts. This will not work. So I have upgraded my switch to a heavier toggle switch, which I had, and um, I made a little plate to cover the hole. Um, probably put a little sealant around that um, and then put this in. But at the same time, I've also considered just ordering another box and uh, inserting the appropriate hole and not having to use this little faceplate. But at this time, I will be using this little faceplate for this demonstration. Okay, so after you get your holes cut into place, you wanna set this stuff off to the side because it is not needed now. Um, at this time, what you need to do is figure out your support how it's constructed, all the bends, um, how long it needs to be, and all that good stuff. So you're going to take your support bracket, you're going to turn where the PID goes towards you, and we're going to mount it on. Cook pot that goes on the end of here can generate heat back through the support, melting this box. So for that reason, I've got rubber washers I'm putting between the box and the support. Same thing on the back. I got another screw, another screw, another nut, and another washer, and another rubber washer. The rubber washer goes between them. The screw is going to come up through the bottom. I guess it's easier to do it upside down. Screws up through the bottom, put your washer on, and put your nut on. Um, some of this stuff I already had. As you can tell, this washer got a little rust on it. I'm not going to worry about that. So there we go. We've got our box mounted to our support bracket, just like so. Okay, so the very next step is we want to install our cook pot on the end of our support bracket. Okay, so now if you remember, I mentioned that heat from the cook pot could transfer through the support bracket and melt the box. That's why we installed these uh, rubber washers down here and allowed a little bit of space in between the box itself and the bracket. Well, we will also want to try and reduce heat uh, transfer from the pot to the bracket. And my efforts to do that is to take the bolt that I'm going to use to mount. I'm going to take two small washers, put down here at the bottom. We're going to throw on a large washer. 
and then we're going to throw on two more small washers. So the next thing we want to do before we actually mount the pot is slide on our band heater. And this particular band heater is listed down in the video description. Slides on just like so. Now, we're going to go ahead and secure it with this bolt to the bracket and snug it up. Just enough to keep it from wobbling all over the place and uh, to let me finish the rest of the assembly. Um, the next thing you're going to want to do, and this is going to kind of give you an idea where this is at, uh, the location, um, there's a hole here you're going to have to drill. And that's for this uh, wire grommet insert. And what this is going to do, this is going to go through this hole. And what you may have to do is take your cook pot back off. And actually, I had to uh, I had to mount my box to the bracket, uh, figure out where the location of this was, and then take the box back off the bracket to drill the hole. So that's probably what you'll have to do. This is the part that will tighten down after you get the wires through. So don't get ahead of yourself. Take your time. Push this up through here, okay, like so. Do the same with the other. Now it gets a little tricky because this one's a little bit heavier wire. Um, got a lot going on here in this small area. Maybe easier to feed the wire through and then put the cook pot on. Guess I haven't experimented too much with that. But it is an idea. Okay, now we're going to pull this tight without kinking it. Get everything situated just the way we like it. And then we're going to tighten this nut down right here to hold the wires in place. So that gets us to that point. At this time, what we need to do is to mount our handle. Now, the handle goes on via this hole here. The handle is nothing but a piece of uh, rigid plastic uh, conduit. I'm not sure the name of this piece, but it's, it's in the conduit section at most hardware stores and I also got one of these wire grommets that I put on this end now this wire grommet didn't actually fit in there so I had to take my little pin torch and uh, as you can see heat this end up I then actually had a CO2 cartridge from a Daisy BB gun a used one and after this was heated and warm I pushed it down into the pipe and that flared it enough that this screwed into it after it cooled. After you get that done, you can take a piece of uh, water pipe insulation and pull the sticky part off on the inside here, all the way across, and close it up, and there is your handle. Um, this here is how we're gonna tighten it to the support bracket, and the next thing we want to do before we go that far though is take our wire, our cord, which is listed down in the video description. We're going to put on our, uh, our nut for the bottom, for the grommet, then we're going to feed our wire through. Now I've already had this wire through once. And I know that this green mark is the part where it comes through the box. So now that we've got the cord through the handle, 
we want to feed it through the big hole in the support bracket, put on our conduit nut, and then feed through this small hole here, which goes all the way through into the plastic box or casing. Now I am not going to lie, this part is a little bit contrary. You do have to hold your mouth just right to get all this stuff to feed through here the way you want. But having the tight hole on the bottom is crucial to keep water out. Okay, here we go. See my conduit handle fitting has came all the way through. I can now put the nut on and tighten it down. So there we go. Now we can tighten down the nut at the bottom. Keeps the water from pulling back through and also keeps water from uh, getting inside the handle. Now on the inside of the box, we've got our power source, which will run over to our toggle switch. Now as I mentioned, I drilled my hole on the face of this uh, plastic casing too big for my toggle switch, so for now I have made a plastic cover. I'm put the plastic cover on. I'm gonna Install the nut for the toggle switch. So now we've got our toggle switch on. We've got our handle on with our cord. We've got our cook pot mounted. And, and one thing I wanted to point out about this series of washers and why I did that. Um, if you're familiar with how a heat sink works, um, you can see heat is transferred down into here and then you've got places for air to flow through. I tried to replicate that same idea with this series of washers. Going from the small to the big washer allows places for the air to flow through. So that was my idea. Um, whether it will work, we will soon find out. Let's go ahead and let me show you where I mounted, chose to mount my solid state module. And that is right here on this side. And basically, you've got all kinds of place options of where to mount it. Um, but I wanted to have enough room to do my wiring and um, not cram everything together. So mine will be mounted over here on the side but for the same reason, um, I don't want to try and wire it while it's mounted to the side of the box. So I'm going to leave it free floating for now. Um, with this, there is no holes to run the wires through. But over here, you want to make sure to loop your wires through here and then run them to here. Don't run your wires over top of the box because when you go to push them through, it's not going to fit. It's not going to work. What was suggested to me, and I chose to follow through and do the same, was I just went and bought a, a trailer hitch wire harness kit. And uh, I got this link down in the video description um, if you're interested in going this route. Um, so this is how I'm gonna use, what I'm going to use for my wire to wire this whole vaporizer. So that's where I am at now, and that's where we'll pick back up. Okay, to begin the wiring procedure. First, let me mention before we get too far into this, since I have already wired this and then unwired it, and I'm now getting ready to wire it again, I did not stick the screws back in the back of the PID. I could not see a reason to take them out, put them back in, take them out, put them back in, just seemed kind of crazy. So I left them out for this demonstration, and that would be these screws that you see sitting right here. Um, before we go any further, 
I want to go ahead and mention the green ground wire coming from the electrical cable. I went ahead and grounded right here, which would ground to the support bracket underneath. Um, your neutral wire. You're going to need to put uh, a terminal on the end, and you're going to need a, another wire coming off of it, uh, six to eight inches long. Okay, so now let's go ahead and begin. Um, Inkbird has sent these fine instructions here, which are kind of complicated. Um, I ain't going to lie. You're going to look at them, you're going to scratch your head and say, do what? That doesn't make any sense. So what I'm going to do with you is share the wiring diagram up that I used. And this here is courtesy of a guy named George. I um, found his video on YouTube. And I'm going to link it down in the video description in case you would want to go watch his video and maybe my chart isn't making any sense to you. Um, so this is going to be the chart that I'm going to use and simply because the paper is white and I could not show a white wire I replaced the white wire with blue. So there you go that's how that will work and you'll also notice that the ground wire here is not labeled on here and that's just because I do not have the box drawn on here but this is where it goes right here right to your support bracket so now we'll begin and I'm gonna set this chart right over here where I can see it but you can easily bring this up and pause the screen and look at it yourself to wire it or maybe just take a snapshot uh, that's an idea too okay so what we're gonna do to begin is we want to make sure that we put this on the inside and run our wires through it so I'm gonna set that right there the very first thing you want to do is take your hot wire and run it to the toggle switch. And then the other terminal coming out, I used a yellow wire and that's still a hot wire. And this goes to number one right here on our solid state module. And this actual connection gets two wires. It gets this one from the toggle switch and this one which goes to the PID okay so we've got from the toggle switch to number one and then back from number one with a wire lug on the end to run to the PID and this one's going to go to number 10 on the PID. So we're going to loop through our plastic support bracket to tighten in the PID out the front hole. And we're going to go to number 10. And if you look real close, it's hard to see them, but each one of these is labeled with a number. And now we have the hot wire hooked up. The next wire we're going to hook up is going to be number 9. And it's going to be... this white wire or where this neutral wire comes in from the bottom your main neutral wire and you uh, hooked a jumper coming back off of it that is going to be your number nine on the PID so so far you've got number 10 which is a hot wire jumping off of number one on your uh, solid state module and you've got a number nine which goes back and splits off of your neutral wire the other part of the neutral wire one side of your uh, band heater plugs in to the neutral wire the other side is going to hook up to number two on here on the solid state relay. Now with your band heater it's not polarity sensitive which means it doesn't really matter which wire you have going to number two and which wire you split off and run back to your PID. It's not polarity sensitive. The one that is polarity sensitive 
is going to be your K-type thermocouple. And you're going to notice if you pull this stainless steel protective uh, wire or wrap down, you're going to notice that these are actually got two different colors. You've got a blue one and you've got a red one. We're going to go ahead and loop them through here to run them to the PID. And let's see. Red goes to number four, which is on the other side over here. Let me get me a screw. We're going to take red to number four. We're going to take the other one, which is blue, and we're going to run it to number three on the PID. Now one thing I want to mention is that by having this quick connect right here at the end of your neutral wire and going out to your band heater, what you can do is while you're playing with the settings in your PID once you get it wired, the rest of it wired, by unhooking this you can mess around with the settings and your band heater will not come on. Um, your band heater will only work when this is plugged in but even when this is unplugged you'll still have power here you'll be able to go in and make all of your adjustments and your settings and then uh, once you're ready to uh, actually have heat to your band heater you can plug these back together now what I like about that is it's winter time now so you know I'm not actually able to go outside and and test out the vaporizer but I can sit in here and make adjustments to my PID, maybe just go through it and get familiar with the different menus and not have to worry about the band heater heating up. So I really like this little quick connect and I suggest you do the same thing right in this area. Okay, so the next thing, we're going to take a yellow wire from number three on our solid state relay or module. Okay, so this number three is going to go to number eight on our PID. I'll put a screw in there. And number eight. Kind of contrary to hold all these little parts and get everything to go together just the way you want. So the last wire I have is a white wire and it's going to go from number 6 on the PID to number 4 on the relay or the module. So let's go ahead and do our PID first. Okay, now we'll run this right through here and over to number four here. And this is our last connection. And Okay, now just to make sure I got everything good and tight, I'm going to use this bigger screwdriver. Go back and tighten everything down. Don't want to over tighten them on the PID, but at the same time I don't want them falling out or getting loose or whatever it might be. So there we go. Now you will push your PID into the box like so and you want to feed this up around your wire terminals which is going to be kind of fun 
Not really fun. And continue to push this right down your PID. You'll hear it click to lock it in place. And then you can go a little further and tighten down these screws here on this. And that'll put support or pressure against the front and pull the PID back in to the box. Now we can uh, go ahead and mount our uh, solid state module on the side via these two screws that I already have in place. Now I will have to take one of them out to get it in. Tighten down the screws. Now, one thing I want to mention while I'm thinking of it, there is this uh, grease, it's a thermal grease, that you should apply between the solid state module and the heat sink. Um, I have this stuff linked down in my video description, along with all the other parts that I use to make this. So I wanted to point this out because I have not mentioned it to this point. And we are now going to go ahead and close up this box. To do that, I have four screws. And you're gonna notice one thing I liked about this box is it's got a waterproof gasket. And I can actually need to stretch it a little bit right there, but I'm not gonna worry about that. I am ready to be done with this project. It was a fun project, but boy did it stretch out. There you have it folks, homemade ProVap. So of course, you know, it's still kind of cold out, so I haven't really had much of a chance to dial it in. Um, I figure, you know, spring's just around the corner. I'm going to have plenty of opportunities to uh, play with the PID and the adjustments and do what I need to do to get it to where it's working efficiently. Um, now just a little bit ago, I did bring it outside and throw uh, one dose or one treatment of oxalic acid in the cook pot just to see how it would do. And this is what that looked like. Check it out. So there you have it folks. That's my deal on the ProVap. Um, there will be more to come. Um, it's just like I said, it's been very time consuming figuring out how all this went together, how it all worked. Um, I plan to release another video here soon on how I made my caps um, for the pot, for the cook pot. So if that's something you're interested in, stay tuned, it'll be coming. Uh, if you like the video, throw me a thumbs up. It'll help boost it in YouTube search ranks and make it easier for other beekeepers to find. If you haven't subscribed, please do so and make sure you click on the little bell so that you're notified when I release new videos. Thanks for watching. JC's Bees and all these chickens.